The fossil record can preserve some absolutely extraordinary things sometimes. Exceptional preservation of organisms that lived hundreds of millions of years ago is a very rare occurrence, but when it does happen it can reveal so much about the past life on Earth. One thing that's very clear from these sites of exceptional preservation, some of which date back to over half a billion years ago, is that worms were very important at this time, as indeed they still are today. Wormy creatures have been around for an immensely long time and played a variety of roles in the ecosystems of the past. One of the most incredible prehistoric worm discoveries in recent years has to be the case of tiny, possibly parasitic worms that attach themselves to larger worm species, discovered in a formation that dates back to around 518 million years ago. The fossils that preserve this behaviour are absolutely unbelievable. They very clearly show larger worms that appear to be infested with smaller creatures attached to their bodies. So what was going on here? These worms were first noticed by paleontologist Xiaoyan Ma when she was looking through the worm fossil collection at Yunnan University in China as part of her PhD project. She noticed some strange looking protruding structures on some of the fossils belonging to the species Crycocosmia ginningensis and Mafangscolex sinensis, both of which are ancient relatives of the Priapulid worms, a group commonly called penis worms. Although she had to focus on other projects at the time, later on two more specimens were discovered in 2011 while she was working at the Natural History Museum in London, and together with museum paleontologist Greg Edgecombe, they undertook a preliminary study, initially thinking the protrusions might be actual outgrowths of the bodies of these worms themselves, potentially representing rudimentary appendages. But they weren't entirely sure if this is really what they were seeing here, so they decided to wait and see if any more of these mysterious fossils would be found. And luckily, they were. Two years after this, Professor Peiyun Kong of Yunnan University managed to find a beautiful specimen of Crycocosmia that very clearly showed in remarkable detail that these protrusions weren't body outgrowths, but instead an entirely new species of prehistoric worm that had for some reason attached themselves to this organism. Even more specimens were then later found by more paleontologists at the university, helping to clarify what exactly was being seen here. After studying these fossils in detail, a paper describing the finds and naming this new species of apparently parasitic worm was then published in 2017. The name Inquicus felatus was chosen, coming from the Latin for ancient lodger provided with a sucker, in reference to how it attached itself to other worms. The anatomy of Inquicus proved to be quite puzzling for the team of paleontologists who described it though. The overall body of these creatures is described as bowling pin shaped, being widest at about a quarter of the length up from the attached end, then narrowest three quarters of the way up, and they seem to reach a maximum length of about 3.3 millimeters. However, it's unclear what kind of worm exactly these are. There's a complete through gut in these animals, which means they can't be a kind of flatworm, and there's no segmentation obvious anywhere, which means they're probably not a kind of annelid worm. These inquicus worms seem to be attached to larger worms by their back ends with a subcircular shaped disc present here that actually doesn't penetrate through the cuticle of their hosts. This type of backwards attachment, as well as the body shape, led the researchers to make comparisons to hairy back worms and rotifers. However, everything else about the anatomy of Inquicus rules these groups out too. It's also not likely that these fossils represent the immature stages of these host species, due to their anatomy not looking like the juveniles of these worm groups, and the fact that they're associated with two different worm species, but they look identical on both of them. So the exact identity of these worms remains a mystery for now, and it's something that future research will hopefully be able to investigate. Nevertheless, these fossils are obviously still incredibly important in telling us about paleoecology and how interactions between organisms evolved over time. As I already mentioned, the inquicus worms aren't actually penetrating the bodies of the host worms, instead just being attached to the surface by suckers. So the researchers suggest that this wasn't actually a case of a truly parasitic relationship. Instead, it might be a kind of symbiosis known as commensalism, in which one species benefits while the other doesn't benefit but also isn't harmed. Since the mouth end of Inquicus was facing away from the body and it doesn't seem like they could bend around to face the hosts, it doesn't seem like they were feeding on the larger worms. What might have been happening here is that the smaller worms used the hosts as attachment points to help in their feeding, or even possibly for the sole purpose of travelling around and becoming dispersed. However, the researchers point out the fact that some of the host worms had quite a significant number of Inquicus individuals attached to them, so there would almost certainly have been some negative effects on their locomotory capabilities. One of the other interesting aspects of this discovery is the fact that Inquicus only targeted very specific hosts, with Crycocosmia and Mafangscolex being the only taxa in the formation to have these attached passengers, even though there are more than 50 different worm species so far known from this ancient community. 
Many of these other worm species also have quite similar cuticle morphology to the two species that are being targeted, which means that infestation by Inquicus must be based on a deciding factor other than just attachment morphology, another interesting mystery to be solved in the future. So the paleontologists conclude that this is probably the oldest known example of host specificity among symbiotic organisms in the fossil record. Not only that, but it would also be the oldest example of a phenomenon called host shift, when a new host species becomes colonized from an original host species, and it's actually something that acts as a significant mechanism of speciation in many organisms. There's obviously still a lot that needs answering about these worms then, and it'll be exciting to see what future discoveries reveal about their evolutionary relationships, as well as potentially what they were actually doing on these hosts. But the fact that fossils such as these can actually be preserved and show a complex bit of prehistoric behaviour really is just mind-blowing, illustrating the importance of sites of exceptional preservation. It also shows just how complicated marine ecosystems were, even over half a billion years ago in the Cambria and highlights the fact that there's still so much out there to be discovered. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about this fascinating symbiotic worm, and I really hope you've been enjoying Worm Week 2022 so far. Still to come is 7 Days of Worm Science, a video on prehistoric worms preserved in amber, an Icelandic cryptid worm, giant prehistoric predatory bobbit worms, and a video on my mum's channel One World about how worm poop can be used to help our polluted planet. Thank you all so much to our Patreon supporters too, including our Dinosaur Tier supporters, Amanda Von Nordek, Archianthus, Ari, Clara Middleton, Daniel Ingraham, Drew Srivastava, George Vojtek, Greg Silvernail, Corey Peterson, Loxie Poo, Mendicant Friar, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Nicole Bueno, Persian Boy, Ralph Balzac, Robert Thomas, and Steve Bradshaw. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful worms that surround us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.